Let's read Mark chapter 1. This is our passage for today. It's going to be on the screen. It says this, verse 21. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. Say authority. authority. And not as the scribes. Verse 23. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Verse 25, but Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet and come out of him. Notice the authority Jesus walked in. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, say authority, authority, he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. The title of my message this morning is Understanding Authority. Understanding authority. Let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, we just ask for you to speak, Father God. Lord, we know your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. And so, Father God, I pray that, God, through your word, Lord, you would speak as we unwrap, God, what authority is, what your God-given authority to us is. Lord, would you give us clarity, God? Lord, would you give us new vision, God? Would you give us new revelation, God, of what that is? And so, Father, we thank you this morning for your spirit that is here, God. We thank you for your spirit does at work. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you are moving and you are working. And, Lord, we are just so grateful and we are so thankful, Father God. Lord, would you continue just to speak through your word today? We love you. We bless you. And everyone said amen, amen, amen. You may have a seat this morning. Hey, good morning. My name is Adam. If we haven't met before, I'm the pastor here. And what a privilege it is to have you here. If you are new, do me a favor of service. Come and uh, say hello if we haven't met before. We are in a series, have been in a series entitled uh, Jesus Stories. And what we're doing is we're looking at the 37 different miracles that, are, that we have that are pinned in the Gospels. Now, we said this earlier, but I want to say it again because I think it, it, it's worth repeating that if all the books in the world were filled up with just the miracles of Jesus, that it couldn't contain all the miracles that Jesus did when he's on the earth. So what we see is only a fraction of the miracles that Jesus did while he was on the earth, which is mind-boggling, which is incredible, right? So all we have is these 37 miracles that, we, that we're looking at during this series. And so on Monday, I was reading through all of these miracles that we have and the gospels that we have not covered yet. And I was just asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want to speak to us about this Sunday? Which one are you highlighting? So I read through all of them and I just began to pray, Lord, Lord, what, what are you doing? What are you saying? What are you speaking to us? What do you want to say to us right now? Because remember, um, this is really about us understanding how Jesus walked in miracles and how he did that so then we can learn from his example and also be the hands and feet of Jesus to this world. And as I read the story which we read earlier in Mark, the Lord just highlighted this one word to me that I feel like this is a word for us today. And it's the word authority. The word authority. In society today, don't we have a negative view of authority. No one likes sitting underneath authority in the culture, in society today, and maybe perhaps it's because we've seen someone misuse, abuse authority before, and we are now judgmental towards authority, and no longer do we want to sit underneath authority because of that. No one wants to hear, hey, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. We all are kind of just on our own. And so whether we realize it or not, what I believe 
is this. I believe that because of this view in society today and how we've been impacted by it, now it's hard for us to sit underneath the authority of God. I'm talking this morning about our God-given authority. Maybe because we don't understand what authority is is why we don't see more miracles, signs, and wonders in our day and age today. Because it all comes from the Father, you see? I was thinking about this, and, uh, you know, growing up, uh, my sister, I'm the, I'm the youngest uh, in my family, and so my sister would always tell me what to do. And I would go back to her, it's like, you're not my mom, you're, you're not, you're not going to tell me what to do, anybody else just like that, you're the youngest and your oldest sibling kind of did that, or maybe you're the oldest sibling and you told your younger sibling what, what to do, uh, Right? Nobody likes to hear from their sibling, what to, why? Because they're not the authority. I say, hey, you're not my mom, right? I see this in even my own kid's life, Ruth and Caleb. I, uh, Ruth will always tell Caleb kind of what to do because she doesn't want to see Caleb uh, get in trouble at all. And so she, would, she says, hey, Caleb, do this, do that. And Caleb's like, no, I'm not doing it, you know, like kind of thing. They get in a fight, you know. Uh, oftentimes I will give Ruth the authority to go to Caleb and say, hey, uh, Ruth, tell Caleb to come here. It doesn't matter because he still doesn't want to. He still doesn't want to listen to his sister. You know what I'm saying? Even though I've given Ruth the, the the authority to go to Caleb and say, "Hey, tell Caleb to come here," I'll tell him this. He still does not want to hear it. See, there's a point of view of authority that we have today in our culture and society that we really don't understand what biblical. I'm talking about biblical authority. What biblical authority is? I want to give you a definition of biblical authority this morning. It is this? Authority is the ability, right, or power to do something. This ability or power is derived from another person or source and is given to someone for a particular purpose. Let me ask you this question this morning. Do you believe that Jesus walked in authority? Absolutely. He walked in such incredible authority when he walked the earth. When he walked this planet, Jesus walked in this authority. Look what they said about Jesus. We read this earlier. Verse 22, the people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teacher's religious law. Mark 1, amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened? What sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It has such authority. Say authority. authority. Even evil spirits obey his orders. Wouldn't it be incredible if we as a church begin to walk in this type of authority that Jesus walked in? What if the body of Christ, what if the greater sea church, what if journey church begin to walk in the authority that Jesus walked in when he walked this planet? You see, there is a, a world out there that is dying, that is hurting. And I believe that as the darkness gets darker, the light is going to get lighter. And God is calling us in this time to begin to walk in our God-given authority. Yeah. For the hurting, for the broken, those who need healing, those who are bound by strongholds, and those who are bound by generational things in their life, what if we begin to walk in this authority, and they knew if they came to Journey Church, right? They knew if they came to Journey Church that they would receive freedom. They would receive life because of the presence of God and the authority that we begin to walk in. Church, are we too sophisticated? Are we too smart? Are we too bound by a religious spirit? Or are we just saying, Lord, just with your will, Whatever you want, God, whatever your will is, that's what I want to do, Father God. How many of you here just say, Lord, I, I don't want any religious spirit. I'm not too smart. I'm not too sophisticated. I just want you. Anyone in here? Amen. Yeah. I believe that we need to understand authority to begin to walk as Jesus walked when he walked this planet. So this morning, I want to lay a foundation for miracles to operate in our lives. There was something that Jesus understood about authority, and I'd submit to you that we don't really understand our authority. And Jesus walked in such incredible authority. But did he ever give authority to anyone else? Let's answer this question. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. It says this, Now he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over a few weak demons. 
I love it. Yes. All. He gave him power and authority over all the demons and the power to heal diseases. Now, I just want to show you this. I don't want to tackle this this morning. I just want to open up a can of words, something for you to wrestle with. Notice he says power and authority over all demons, but he says power over diseases. You can wrestle with that later. I don't want to get into it this morning. We'll open up that can later. Verse 2, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform miracles. Notice all demons. Can you imagine having authority over all demonic principalities and powers of darkness, right? Is there anyone here who would like to have that kind of authority? Now, before you say, well, we do have that kind of authority, let's just be honest. Do we really walk in that kind of authority in our lives? Because I'm not trying to be ugly. We can walk around all day long and say, we got it, we got it, we got it. But, man, oftentimes I don't really see it. We'll yell at something and try to get our our hearts stirred and try to work ourselves up for hours and hours and hours and then nothing ever happened. When the disciples did it, man, that demon was gone. That stronghold was broken. That chain was broken in, in their life or in that other person's life. Are we really walking in this authority? I'm wondering if there are some things about authority that we need to understand. So this is going to be a two-part message. Uh, this morning, I want to answer this question. The next week, I want to answer two other questions. Two questions this morning are this. Where do we get authority and how do we get authority? And then next week, I want to answer this question, these two questions. How do we use authority and how do we lose authority? So we're going to talk about this next week. This week, though, let's start by answering this question. We're asking these questions to understand what authority is. Question this morning, where do we get authority? Where do we get authority? In order for us to answer this question, where do we get authority, we need to first ask the question, where did Jesus get authority? We naturally just believe that Jesus just had authority. And that's a a logical conclusion. But watch this, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority, say all authority. All authority authority has been what? Given Given to me in heaven and on earth. Now I want you to really look at the scripture right now. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now many of us in this room were familiar with the next two verses. Um, Most of us know them. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. What is this? It's the Great Commission. It says this, therefore, say therefore. Therefore, "Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them and baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things which I commanded you. All right, now here's the point. Here's the point. Verse 19 starts with the word what? Therefore. So it follows verse 18. 18 says, all authority. All authority. Jesus doesn't say, I have all authority. Jesus doesn't say, all authority is mine. Jesus makes a statement we need to understand. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore what? Therefore go. Now, I understand that means Jesus has all authority. I understand all that. I'm not saying that he doesn't. Jesus has all complete authority. No doubt about it. When, if I give you a piece of jewelry, you now have that jewelry. It is yours. Jesus has all authority. That's not what I'm trying, trying to say. He, he has all authority. But what I want you to notice is that word given. I want to highlight the word given. Jesus was given all authority. It's not that Jesus earned authority. Jesus was given all authority. And there's a difference. There's a difference. You see, if authority is given and not earned, and it is given to those who are responsible, and is taken from those who are irresponsible, Think of it like this. When I, when I came to the church six years ago, um, 
Pastor Eric, our founding pastor, hired me as the worship pastor. He gave me authority over the worship team and over the media and uh, over the production team. That was my role. He gave me the authority. And then when uh, last year in June, when we made the transition and Pastor Eric retired, he then gave me authority as the lead pastor. I'm super humbled by that. And then I turned around and I gave authority to, the, to Wendy to lead and direct uh, the worship team. Now, if I am irresponsible with my authority, in our bylaws, I can then be removed by the overseers and the elders as the lead pastor if I'm irresponsible with it. Now, if I'm responsible with the authority that God has given me, what happens? I can continue to have that authority. So I simply just want you to notice, you see, authority is given, not earned. But it is taken from the irresponsible and given to the responsible. So I want to go here now and just solidify this point. John 12, 49. John 12, 49, it says this, for I have not spoken on my own authority. This is Jesus talking. I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a suggestion. (laughs) No, gave me a what? Gave me a command. He gave him a command. What should I say? Uh, what, What I should say and what I should speak. See, Jesus did not come and say what he wanted to say, He said only what the Father wanted him to say. He said only what the Father commanded him to say. Isn't that interesting? He said only what the Father commanded him to say. You see, all authority is given except by one person. All authority is given any authority that you have, whether it's at work, home, here at the church, that authority is given except for one person. Who is that? It's the Father. All authority ultimately comes down from the Father. And so Jesus did only what the Father commanded him to do. We said earlier that authority is given. It is not... um, I forget the other word. Authority is given, right? Authority is only only given. So if authority is only given to the responsible, but is taken from the irresponsible, right? So if we were irresponsible with our authority, so this is what I was getting at. Okay, here we go. My, My mind's back on point. Obedience, right? As we walk in obedience with the Lord, we can then steward what the Lord is saying, what he is doing in our lives. We need to begin to hear the will of God, and speak the will of God. That is why uh, Jesus was so powerful. That's why Jesus did miracles, because he understood and knew the voice of the Father. Let's look at this now. John 14, 10. Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Look at that phrase. The Father who dwells in me does the works. Do you remember when they came to Jesus and said, we just love your teaching? We just love how, how you teach Jesus. What did, what did the Father say? What did Jesus say back to them? I don't say anything unless the Father tells me to say it. They came to say, hey, Jesus, I love the miracles. What did Jesus say? I don't do anything outside of what my Father's will is. He, is always, he was always turning the focus back to the Father. But I want you to look at this again. Let's look at this last phrase. The Father who dwells in me does the works. The Father who dwells in me does the works. Are you ready for revelation on how to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders? It's to hear the voice of God. Oftentimes we try to do our own will. We try to get ahead of what the Father wants to do. It's only through the will of the Father And so we need to hear and obey the Father. So anyone thinking in here, what about the Holy Spirit? uh, John 16, 13 through 15. However, when he, this is Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Watch this. For he will not speak on his own authority. Now let me just clarify something before we go on. Another word we could substitute this for is authority is will. 
See, Jesus is basically saying, I'm not coming to do my will, I'm coming to do his will. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he's not coming to do his will, he's coming to do the Father's will. I wonder if a lot of times the thing that we speak don't come to pass because they're our own will and not the Father's will. Back to this passage, he will not speak, the Holy Spirit does not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. You see, you might say, it looks like it's saying that the Holy Spirit is going to take what, Jesus, what is Jesus's and declare it. It looks like he's saying, speaking on Jesus' authority, but watch how Jesus clarifies himself in that last statement. He says, he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And then verse 15, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So are you following me this morning? Hope I made it clear. Everything comes from who? The Father. The Father has the authority. Now I have to ask you this question. If the Holy Spirit and Jesus only do what the Father asks him to do, the the Holy Spirit only tells us what the Father is is saying to him, then don't we only want to go with what God is speaking and what God is saying in our own lives? Oftentimes we try to get outside of the will of God. We try to hurry something up. We try to do something out of our own might, out of our own ability, out of our own power. You know, we have a, a, a value around here. It's pray first. Why? Because we wanna, we're not asking God to bless something that we want to accomplish. Right? Well, we want to go. What we, what we see. No, we're going to pray first because we want to see what, what's the will of God. That's where I want to go because I know it's blessed. I know that's God's will. And I know that, man, there's going to be some incredible things in that direction, Right? And so what do we do? We first, we want to get, before we act, before we go anywhere, before we do anything whatsoever, what do we do? We want to ask, what is the will of the Father? Lord, what is your will with the situation? Where are you taking me, God? Where are you going, God? What is your will? That's where I want to be. You see, the only way to be victorious as a believer on this earth is to walk in the Father's authority that is given through his son, Jesus. It's about the father's will, the father's desire. All authority goes back to the father. Think about this, a, a, a policeman, if he, if, he, if he stops you for speeding or maybe he stops your spouse, there's always someone in the family that, that drives a little fast, you know? Uh, maybe if you get stopped and, and uh, the, the, the police officer gives you a ticket for speeding, uh, what is he operating underneath? He's not operating underneath his own authority. What is he doing? He's operating from the city that gave him the authority to do that. Now, if he is irresponsible with that authority, that authority can be removed from him. But my point is this. My point is that there is power behind that role that he plays, right? And that is why there's, there's power behind it. That's why he can give you a ticket for speeding. See, authority is always delegated. It's not the person who's speaking. It's the power behind the person who's speaking. So number one, where do we get authority? The Father. Number two, how do we get authority? How do we get authority? To answer this question, let's go to Matthew 21, 18 through 22. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. Have any of you ever (laughs) done something like that before? Isn't that incredible? Now remember, was it Jesus? Was it Jesus who cursed the fig tree? Who was it? He heard the Father's voice, and so he spoke what the Father told him to speak. So the Father cursed the fig tree. Now watch this, verse 20. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree. You see Jesus saying that? That is absolutely amazing. But also on top of this, in addition to this, he says, 
If you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. You will receive. Now, do you believe in your heart of hearts if you speak to a mountain that it will be thrown into the sea? Now, don't give me the charismatic answer. Do you really believe in your heart of hearts that if you speak to a mountain, it will be thrown into the sea? This is not a blank check for Christians to write. This is not a name it, claim it theology. What is it? If the Father's will, because you heard the Father speak it and say it, was for that mountain to be thrown into the sea, then you can, because you're you're the mouthpiece speaking it forth in faith, then you can see that mountain thrown into the sea, but only if it's the Father's will. If it's not the Father's will, that mountain isn't going nowhere, because he created that mountain. That mountain is staying, right? So it's the Father's will in all of this. So that's the key. If the Father tells me to speak to the mountain, it will be removed into the sea. It's the Father speaking, Listen, it's not us getting up the nerve to do it. It's not us uh, uh, getting us pumped up, ourselves pumped up to to see the mountain thrown in the sea. It's not that. It's the Father's will. Requests made to God in prayer must be in harmony with with God's will. And God can do anything that's beyond anything we could ask, think, or imagine. He is a God of the impossible. Amen? Anybody know that? So here's my question today. Here's my question now to bring it home. Is he speaking his will and we're just not listening? Is God speaking his will to us and we're just not listening to his will? Have we not yet learned how to hear his voice? Are we too distracted? Are we going a million miles an hour and we haven't learned to slow down to hear the voice of God? Do we just go and go and go and not really hear what the Father is speaking to the Holy Spirit to tell us and we don't know how to hear what the Father is speaking and so we pray and pray and pray and it just feels like nothing is happening. But maybe we need to slow down and we just need to say, God, what is your will in the situation? Lord, would you speak to me? But if we haven't been faithful in spending time with the Lord to know how to hear the voice of God, if we don't know how to hear the voice of God, then man, when a problem arises, we're not going to really know what that even sounds like. And so we just kind of pray prayers, hoping that they happen, instead of just saying, Lord, what's your will? And then what is his will? Whatever is his will, we declare it in faith, and then God can break through. Because we serve a miracle-working God, yeah? Anybody know that? We serve a miracle-working God. So what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to hear the voice of God, and we want to pray the will of God. Not our own will, but his will. That's why the Lord's Prayer is used as a model to pray. And I love the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed by thy name. In that moment, it's realizing, okay, I'm nothing and God is everything. I'm underneath the authority of this almighty God. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, not my own kingdom, not what I want. I'm not trying to build something big in an empire for myself, but Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, right? Not my will, not what I want, not what I desire, but only what the will of the Father is. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Listen, there's no room for sickness, disease in heaven. Every stronghold, every demonic force has to go in heaven. There's no room for any of that in heaven. And so when the Lord tells us to declare heaven on earth over situation, there is power in that when it's his will. You see? So what do we do? We just say, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many of you just want to walk in authority that God has given you? You see, authority is given. Authority is given. It is given to the responsible and is taken from the irresponsible. We only want to do what the Lord commands us to do. Would you rise with me in this room?
You see, a lot of times we don't really understand the will of God. Isaiah says this, his, his ways are greater, his thoughts are greater than ours. Like, I, I have to be honest with you, I don't really know sometimes the will of God, but what I know is that we just have to seek the will of God, then he reveals the will of God to us. Some of you are asking, well, what's, what's God's will? And the answer is, man, he's God, <laughs> and I'm man. And it's just literally an authority submitting ourselves before an almighty God who has all authority in heaven and on earth and understanding what his will is and then walking boldly in his will. That's why the Bible says to pray without ceasing because it's a conversation. So that when you learn to have this conversation with the Lord day in and day out on a regular basis, man, God can move. And God can work in that. May we learn to hear the voice of God. I want to pray with you right now. And shut your eyes over this room. Lord, we thank you, God. That